So, you've got your fountain pen inked up and presumably ready to write. You begin your first letter and nothing. You try again and oh, there we go. We're good now, it's writing. No wait, it's not writing again. Your pen is skipping and giving you hard starts. Overall, it's being inconsistent and that is not acceptable. So in this video, we're going to primarily focus on the nib and how that might be interrupting your pen's flow. Before we dive too deep into that, there are some things that you can do first. First of all, clean your pen. Seriously, 80% or more of the problems that we encounter here at the Goulet Pen Company are fixed by the customer cleaning their pen. You can rule out some other things also one by one uh, by trying a new ink, trying a new converter or cartridge, and by using a different paper. It could be anything really. It could be anything in or on the pen. It could be the ink, the paper. It could even be you, but we'll get into that later. In the meantime, here are some common issues that could cause your pen to hard start and how to fix them. If your pen is not writing at all, if it's gushing ink, or if it feels scratchy though, check out some other videos that I'm gonna list in the description below. Okay, a disclaimer first of all. We have a process for helping you with your pen if you bought it from us. So reach out before you attempt any manipulations. We're not responsible for any damage you may do to your pen while trying to fix it. This video is meant to be a quick, basic, troubleshooting assist based on our successful experiences with our customers. Okay, let's get started with hard starting. Arguably one of the most common issues we see is when you go to start a letter or a word and then the pen just glides onto the page and doesn't deposit any ink. Super anticlimactic. The term skipping is often used here to describe when this occurs mid-sentence and the symptoms and solutions are the same. Skipping or hard starting, it's all the same. So hard starting is the ink not being able to get from the tip of the nib to the paper. It can be caused by a few things, such as an over-polished nib. If the nib has baby's bottom, which is pen slang for something being over-polished or improperly polished in terms of the tipping material, the nib will flow all the way down and will stop just short of the paper as overpolishing creates a gap between the nib slit and the page so the ink physically can't reach the page. You could also have ink feeding issues. The pen could be dried out, which would certainly prevent flow since the water in the ink has evaporated, leaving behind a more viscous version of the ink even sometimes leaving behind solid or semi-solid particles. If a lot of air is getting into your cap, things will dry out faster. And let's not forget, you could also just be running out of ink. So definitely check that. All right, number two, you could have splayed tines. Did you maybe flex that nib a little bit too much? You may have spread the tines too far apart to the point where it causes that same interruption as an overpolished nib. The ink now can't reach the page because its pathway is too broad to travel down. And finally, it could be you. Check the rotation and the angle you write at. Try rotating your nib a little bit on the page to make sure that you're making good contact with the paper. You can also try raising or lowering your writing, writing angle as well. If you have a pen friend that also can use the pen and see if they're also having the problem, it could be helpful to see if the problem persists with a different user. So what can we do to fix these issues? Again, clean and re-ink. It's always a good idea and it never hurts. If it's still giving you hard starts, let's check out the nib. Using a loop, check the nib for baby's bottom. All right, I made a nib here to show you what baby's bottom looks like. As you can see, there is a rounded bit down there at the bottom. This is caused by over polishing where it's polished so much that it actually pulls material away from the inside of the nib. So if this nib were to come into contact with a flat surface like paper, the middle portion where the ink is, is not touching the paper. Nothing is going to make contact with the page and therefore no ink is going to get where it needs to be. Unfortunately, this is not an easy fix. The tipping material will actually meet, need to be completely reground to remove that shape. Luckily, there are plenty of qualified professionals that can do this for you. Next, check the tine spacing. This will be much easier to do if your nib is clean and dry because you'll want to look through it like this. 
This slit in the middle of your nib can be too tight or too wide. Both will impact ink flow. If there is no light at all visible between the slit, then way tight. If it looks like this, that's not gonna work either. Ideally, you want a bit of taper. It can touch at the very tip, that's okay, um, or it can just taper and be very, very thin at the tip. But you want something like that, not something like that, certainly not something like that. If you hold it up to the light, you should be able to see a little bit of light all the way up to the top, or maybe just ending at the top. Like it's okay if this bit is touching the tiny, tiny bit, but you wanna see that taper. A taper is just a very, very helpful path for the ink to flow. So if you have a nib that is really, really tight or really, really wide, you might be able to fix that. However, if it's something like that, that's, no, don't, don't, don't mess with that. So if you've got something and you uh, have a, uh, let's see, let's see if it's really, really wide, right? You need to bring these back together. So the way to do that is actually to take, you know, if it's really wide, you just want it's just a piece of metal, you wanna bring it back together. So you'll wanna cross it over like that, a little bit more, flip it over to the bottom, cross it like that a little bit more, and then do that a couple times, check it often. That is super, super important. Do a little bit of that and check it, and a little bit of that and check it, and keep doing that until you notice that your spacing has improved up here at the top, so it's no longer you know, uh, wider than the bottom. You don't want that. You want the top to be more closed off than the bottom is. If it's the opposite, if it is too tight, you need to widen that. And that needs to be done by inserting something into the slit like a piece of brass and then slightly twisting it to then provide some outward pressure opening them up, which is a little bit more difficult to do. It's definitely easier to close them than to open them, but they can be done. However, I caution you. I'm gonna put my tipping material back on to show you exactly what can go wrong here. Since you're dealing with tipping material as well as the nib, uh, this is gonna be way more resilient to bends and twists and manipulations than this. The tipping material is welded on to the main part of the nib. So if you do put a piece of brass or some other shim element in here to try to open them up, use most of your force down here in the middle of the nib, not up at the top where the tipping material is. Because if you put something in here and start manipulating it back and forth, you could do that. And that, A, is not going to work, you're not going to get a good flow, and this is very difficult to fix. And moving these back and forth over and over and over again, they're just gonna do that because you're gonna mess with the weld and just have a sad, sad time. If you do end up working on your nib, remember that you will need to realign it after you're done. If you're going in and out and moving it this way and that way, that those are all big manipulations, but it will still be misaligned more than likely unless you get super lucky. So after you're done making your big manipulations, you will need to make sure that you don't have something like that going on or something like that going on because that creates scratch. So if one tine is higher than the other, you're gonna need to fix that. So if this tine is too high, you're just gonna take it and gently bend it down a few times to see if it is better. Bend it down a few times, see if it's better. Bend it down a few times. Oh no, I bent it down too far. Just take it, maybe bend it back up. Maybe this one needs to come back down. Very small manipulations and check often. Every time you touch it, check it. Touch it, check it over and over again because then you won't run the risk of overdoing it. When both of these seem to be right, at the same level so that you're not having one tine higher than the other, then you should be good. Put it to paper, make sure it's nice and smooth. You could take your nib off of the feed to do this. Um, however, the pressure that gets put on the nib once you put it onto the feed and reinstall it could actually um, mess with your adjustments. So I would recommend doing all of your major adjustments with the nib off of the feed, and then once it's reinstalled, go back and do your fine tuning. Again, only start manipulating your nib if you're careful and confident. This will likely void your warranty with the manufacturer and disqualify you from any retailer return policy. If you're unable to get the pen the way you want it or feel like you shouldn't try, seeking the assistance of a nib technician is the best bet. I'll include several links for some in the description 
below. Of course, if it's an option, you could also seek out a replacement nib. Hopefully that helps. I wish you the very best of luck in your fountain pen adventures. Have fun, right on.